Hey everybody, it's time for another movie show, and this time it really is a movie. Yes. It's a documentary yes. called mm -hmm. Happening, A Clean Energy Revolution. So what this is, is a documentary, it's about clean energy, and uh, it's starring Robert Redford's son, James Redford, um, who kind of brings us through his, his journey mm -hmm. on the clean energy train. Yeah. Learning but but it was in his, it was in not his train but his BMW his non electric BMW for the first part. It was an I3. Yeah, it was he was an I three later on. Oh that's right. But he started off in like a wagon. That's right. And then someone must have called him up and been like, yeah. dude, get yeah. an I three. Yeah, no, they were like watching the first version of his movie and it's like, yeah, it looks really bad when you don't have an electric car. <laughs> I feel like I feel like a lot of things changed early in the movie. Yeah. Uh, like light bulbs got changed. Solar, <laughs> yeah. solar went on the roof. Yeah. Like, let me say though, poor poor branding choices. I mean, he's got Vivint Solar. Yeah, he's got BMW i3. I mean, come on, dude. Yeah, he. he, he yeah, you gotta go. Money. You gotta go. Tesla. Right. Tesla. <laughs> he clearly has the money to fly around and do stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, his dad is Robert Redford. Like <laughs> the guy he that did that one scene in he, Avengers. He yeah. did remind us of that many times. In yes, this. Yes. Right? You get phone calls with his dad. Um, yeah, did he ever call his dad? Clips from his dad's movies. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. there was like. Weren't sure. <laughs> yeah. it, the it, 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 like my dad. It reminded me of the uh, Al Gore movie that we just saw recently. The, yeah. the yeah. second uh, sequel. Yeah. Inconvenient yeah. sequel, where you know halfway through the movie we get just like a, a walk through. The, the photographs of life of yeah. Al Gore and reminding us that I was vice president and I did all these wonderful things as senator. Right. Right. Um, so he did the kind of the same thing. He was like, I am a Redford. Yes. Got but I mean, he you. was a bit more humble. No, he's a humble he guy. He that he knew that he doesn't know he's talking. He, he does seem like a very down-to-earth humble guy. I yeah. like that a lot. And I got to say, after I watched this movie, I was pumped. I really was pumped. It's one of the few documentaries about what's going on in the world where I was just like, yes, I want people to see this movie. And that's kind of why we're reviewing it now. It's, it's not one of those ones where you get out and you're just like, oh my God, we're all going to die. You get out and you go, things are looking pretty good. This is good. Mm. It was positive. Know. It was, it was positive. positive. Definitely positive. A lot, yeah. of positive a lot of hippie positive energy in there from the Redfords. Yeah. But, you know, it's a good thing. So. And, and it seemed like the kind of movie that might be able to push someone over the edge towards doing something like solar energy or an electric car or something like that. Mm -hmm. Did you guys get that feeling at all? I, I could see it. I, I definitely think that this wasn't uh, necessarily as strong of a selling point towards renewable energy for me as it was like just showing like the cool things that are happening, like that happen. you know, like the, that are going on. It was kind of explaining it. I wouldn't say it would push me to the point where obviously I'm already like kind of like that, but um, I don't know if it would push someone as a new viewer. I, th I think it might push them because they did put a lot of focus on like the economic and having it be like like basically a lot of the, yeah. the themes in this movie was that like hey renewable energy is not just this hippie thing it's actually cheaper in a lot of, yeah. in a lot of places yeah, right like that Mark Ruffalo quote in the beginning or something he's like he said that right he's like these companies don't care it's cheaper yeah. like I mean they Wait, probably do care about but like, like Walmart and Apple yeah. now they're all renewable energy and everything and it, like, it's yeah. not like out of altruism it's yeah. out of bottom line you know right. and, mm -hmm. It's well, before we get into it, here is our average of our votes for the yeah. movie. We do this out of five. So this will give you some idea whether we like the movie and whether you might want to see it. And um, I don't think this is a typical movie where we have to be careful of spoilers. So well, I think we're... spoiler alert. Really? The so world is ending. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that, but, but it didn't say that but I think, in the movie. <laughs> no, it didn't say it in the movie, and we we kind of all know that already. So, oh, yeah. I, but yeah. spoiler alert, he does change cars. That, I know that's a huge... <laughs> it's important. <laughs> I, I did spoil that. I'm sorry yeah, for, right those, that. for those two viewers. <laughs> um, we start off this journey, and it kind of confused me, because in the beginning I was like, isn't he a Redford? Because he seemed to be talking about things... In a, in a weird negative way like he, he's talking about um, marches and stuff like that as if he doesn't know what they're about and maybe right. I don't know if he's acting or if he didn't really understand it I feel like maybe he didn't fully understand it Did, yeah I get the sense that he didn't understand it I feel like he uh, and his daughter especially in that one scene where they were talking about going on their little road trip together and he, he was like she was like dad I don't know anything about this mm -hmm. neither do you I felt like that kind of shed a little bit of light on the fact that they're, they don't really know what they're doing. Yeah, he goes and he meets with a friend who does know about this stuff, and he's like, well, maybe you should go see where your power comes from. Yeah. And it, I really got the sense that he had no clue. Yeah. And so he goes for a drive and he, many, many miles yeah, from his right. home to a power plant and figures out where his power comes from. And that's the beginning of our journey here, right? And, yeah. and I think that's why I felt by the end of the movie that this had the hope of getting someone on board who wouldn't been because you start kind of with him from a place of like I don't understand anything mm -hmm. and then he doesn't throw tons of charts at you like Kip Anderson did in Cowspiracy or What the Health 
he just right right it's very low charts yeah he's right yeah it's, it's, yeah it's definitely more emotional it's more emotional than uh, fact facts and, and so it doesn't numbers. scare you yeah. off to like oh my god there's gonna be a lot of numbers and charts like an Al Gore movie might be it was just very emotional and just brought you along on this journey and so and that's why about maybe 20 minutes into it I'm like this isn't gonna do anything for me mm-hmm. and then it started to click did you guys feel the same way that it was a little yeah. bit it, slow it, it, like it, it, just, it took longer for me yeah, it, honestly it, it took it just, longer for yeah, me it just felt like it lacked focus in the beginning mm-hmm. and then it kind of like honed, like honed in on Nevada and, and the issues going on there and, and kind of solutions to, uh, that were being worked on for that problem and then once it got into that it was kind of like it was more engaging but in this beginning part it was like wait so this is a this is a son of a famous actor okay I get that mm-hmm. uh, oh you're confused okay Oh, your your daughter doesn't want to be in the movie, but you're making her be in the movie. Okay, sure. Yeah. Oh, you're putting solar panels in. Oh, okay, Nevada, we're good. Okay, I get it now. You're right. Yeah, like, it definitely took a while to get into it, but once once you get past the beginning part, like past the the Redford section, mm-hmm. I think that you really do get encapsulated by that Nevada like section. So let's talk about Nevada. Mm-hmm. Nevada. 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 Go. Gotta say it right or we're gonna get a lot of comments. I know we're saying it wrong. I don't like saying Nevada. Nevada. That's, that's, Nevada. 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 that's how we say it on the East like Coast. That's how we Nevada. roll. Nevada. We also say Bill Ricca, Peabody, Gloucester. You don't say that. You Worcester. would, you would say yeah. Glo- yeah. Gloucester. Worcester. We all say things differently and that's okay. But in Nevada, what I really liked was that he goes to this like state house hearing mm-hmm. about uh, the, this law that had just changed so that net metering wasn't going to work anymore. Mm-hmm. And people were not talking about the environment whatsoever. These were not a bunch of green hippies. They were upset about money. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And his argument basically was like, hey, this is just money. It makes total financial sense to put solar on your roof. Yeah. And now you're screwing all these people that did that. And he even asked at one point, like, put up your hands if you did this to like, save the environment. And everyone's like, no. Yeah. I thought that was a really powerful argument because that way, yes, it's easy argument if you already care about the planet, but if you don't, it's still a great argument. It's a financial argument. Everyone speaks money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just the money. bottom line, I mean, I think it was Mark Ruffalo that was like, you guys are like the public utility like foundation or whatever. And I'm not sure exactly what it was called. He's like, public. You work for the public. Mm-hmm. And they should have the say in what is going to happen. And they just completely swept them aside and ignored them. Well, Mark I mean, Ruffalo rocks, by the way. Yeah. I just got to say, he's always there standing up for, you know, using the fact that he's a celebrity to stand up for good causes. So they're in Nevada and they're talking to basically one woman who's representing people in, in a, the commission is not even there. Yeah. Like, well, how, timing in. how upsetting is that? Yeah. Like, this is an important issue, and they basically are like, we don't care what you say. Yeah. Go talk to this woman, but it doesn't really matter. I think I she got a vote, it on but... Mute. Yeah. They probably just had it on mute. They're exactly. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like Mark Ruffalo said. He's like, if you were here, you would see all these people that have come out. Thousands of people have come out to, to support this. Mm-hmm. And that's what pumped me up, because at that moment, you get this feeling of, like, we're all together, yeah. and then you government people or not they voted against it but yeah. then luckily later in the movie spoiler alert we get we change that right? right so i mean we've got the governor of nevada who uh voted into law um and it was just it was a great it felt like a great movement of like the people wanted this a year later we got it yeah, yeah. because let's let's face it the the big uh energy companies put the kibosh on it and they thought like we're gonna keep it the way it is see (laughs) and then the people in nevada because of money and that's the only reason um they said no yeah and they got their way and that Mm -hmm. that was empowering to me because i was Mm -hmm. like that just shows that if we want something bad enough as the people the government does what we want it was nice to end the movie that way too to actually end on an uplifting note because like you said so many of these type of documentaries end up like Oof, this is a bummer. Right. But you can do something, you know. <laughs> they just got tack on right. like info yeah, grab. You can do it. It's like so people talking. smiling or something. It just shows up. Like, shows up. You have a voice. On the ice. You know, yeah. use your voice. But I was this was like, about, yeah, the voices actually worked. Yeah, so, I was talking to Brent earlier about this. Like, how? What if they like just? What if that didn't happen? Yeah. What if they never ended? Yeah, because a fair amount of time elapses. I think it's eighteen yeah. months yeah. specifically mm-hmm. between when they vote down what the people want yeah. and then when they get all these new laws passed and yeah. 
you know. So what are they going to plan on doing with the documentary? That's going to yeah. release it as is, or is it just kind of not going to happen? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, right, well, yeah. I feel like I mean, he didn't seem like he had a plan movie. going in, yeah. and that's yeah. that's kind of common to a lot of documentaries that we've seen, right? Mm-hmm. So like with Kip Anderson and Cowspiracy and What the Health, it starts off with like a phone call that he's making, mm-hmm. and then we just kind of follow him wandering through the movie, yeah. mm-hmm. and it seems like the same thing is happening here, like. I care about this. I'm going to find out information, but I don't really know where it's headed. Just yeah. follow me. Mm-hmm. And, and what I liked about this a lot compared to the Incomingum sequel was how, as it went on, it was less and less focus on James and more and more focus on the you know, movement. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. Which it felt different in the Inconvenient sequel. It felt like it started off about like uh, climate change, mm-hmm. and it became more and more, more about, about, house about Al Gore. Yeah, yeah right. so I, that's what I really liked and enjoyed, enjoyed about this documentary. I like that he wasn't a perfect environmentalist guy. Like, yeah, yeah he did end up driving an I three at the end, um, and mm-hmm. end up getting solar on his roof. But he was like the everyday guy. Like, I do, I wasn't doing this before, but hey, now I'm going to change my my light bulbs. Yeah, he but represented now, like the average Joe. Right now that I've been woken up, I'm going to try and make this happen. Yeah. Um, Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's go through our ratings here of what you think of okay. the movie and what you think, you know, would the movie convince other people? Would it be, is it a fun movie to watch if you're not really a super environmentalist? Like, is this just a fun documentary or not? Like, I'm interested in your, your thoughts on that. So we rate movies out of five. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so we don't always give them stars. Let's see what the guys give them today. Let's start with Bobby. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, um, see, I always I always go last. <laughs> we need to do one more movie after this. So we have to go. Um, so I really like the movie. Um, again, I have a ruth. I have a very ruthless voting system, so I'm going to give it a three out of five daughters on Facetime. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. I that's so you weren't you weren't feeling it. What I didn't like about it was kind of like what Nick said was like the lack of focus throughout the movie. It's like it kind of felt like. I wanted to speed along a little bit at times. I'm like, okay, there were a lot of shots, just like them driving in cars and them and him just like chilling and drone shots of San Francisco. And I'm like, okay, like let's get to the point. So it just mm-hmm. kind of felt like he was using his filmmaker abilities to to kind of speed it, uh, to slow it down as long as possible, mm-hmm. and fill time. Brent, Brent, what you got? All right, I'm gonna rate it a little bit higher than Bobby. I'm gonna go 3.5 okay. databases. Oh, yeah, out of five. Um, I, I had some of the similar issues with Bobby. It took me a while to get into it because I felt like in the beginning it was a little... I, I like the doc- documentaries that are more factual, more like numbers that works on me a little bit better than the emotional stuff at times. Like the Kip Harrington and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's stuff I tend to like a little bit more. Not Kip Harrington, Kip Anderson. Kip Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Kip Harrington. Kip, Kip Harrington, that's, that's uh, John Snow. John Snow. John Snow. John Snow. Documentaries. If I say Kip you know, Harrington. If, if John Snow made a documentary, it would be like, uh, yeah. you have to come with me. Yeah. Oh, I want to see that movie. I, uh, honestly, <laughs> I think Game of Thrones is the John oh, Snow documentary. Yeah, you didn't think Game of Thrones is a documentary. I, I apologize, guys. Yeah, everyone knows that Game of Thrones is real. I found myself kind of checking out at times kind of like all right let's get to it when really when it gets to the Nevada part is when it really grabbed me I'm just worried that someone who doesn't care might as much about out. this might check out there like, yeah hey, I'm, I'm kind of bored I'm moving on to something else so Nick? um I'm gonna go with okay I've, I've, ha- I've had a lot of trouble with this with this, okay. the, the, the 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 what the rating is mm-hmm. but so it, like I know it so it's a three three out of five I think inconspicuous car changes um, <laughs> I think that like I mostly my gripe with it is that I was very confused for the first forty minutes because I was I didn't know what the point of the movie was, um, and then when I once once it got to that last like thirty minutes or thirty or forty minutes at the end where it started talking about Nevada and started talking about like specific like a specific issue and a specific solution, that's when I started to like uh, get more interested in the movie and started to you know. Uh, actually enjoy watching it a little more than like oh okay so his dad's in the avengers and you know blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like you're you're confused yeah okay um so I, they definitely like it was interesting in the last part of the movie but the first part just kind of like took me out of it interesting yeah i'm gonna give it four gigafactory twos mm, that's uh, nice. tesla's gigafactory in buffalo new york i really love that it was talking about these clean energy jobs and how you know you don't no longer have to go work in a coal mine to be working in energy or right. working on an oil i mean think about those jobs in the past 
to be in oil, a lot of times meant that you had to go work on an oil platform. Mm -hmm. You had to be away from your family for months on end. You had to go work in a coal mine. Now, clean energy jobs means that you're doing high tech jobs. They're not dangerous. They're no. they're clean. They're using your brain. Like that's exciting, and that showed that in the movie. That was mm -hmm. pretty exciting to me. I yeah, I I was very confused for the first twenty minutes or so, mm -hmm. um, but I was intrigued enough to stay with it. And then by the end of the movie, I was on this emotional high, mm -hmm. and I wanted everyone to watch it. Um, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited by it. I think that if you do watch it or you share it with a friend, you might just gain some more knowledge about uh, you know renewable energy mm -hmm. and some more excitement about it because it's coming. Right. I mean, it's it's here and it's you can't coming stop more. It. Mm -hmm. Right, it makes financial it. sense. I mean, it makes any metric you look at, it makes sense. Right. And, Except for uh, killing the planet. <laughs> it doesn't kill the planet. And if you're going, if you're going for killing the planet, well, yeah, you should swear. stick to oil. Yeah. So, brothers, <laughs> not going to work for you. <laughs> sorry, boys. You know, you're gonna have to find another way to help fund your nephew's weird t-shirt company or whatever. Well, guys, it's like 15 degrees out right now. Come on. Yeah, global, global warming. warming. What? Yep, you that'll see the snow up there? that'll have to be the next uh, documentary on the fact that that climate change is all about big temperature swings, yeah. more humidity. Yeah, we need to don't we need to do started. some serious rebranding because uh, yeah. whoever thought of the word global warming, you screwed us. <laughs> 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 Was Al Gore? Was he the one who coined so. it? I don't know. He also invented the internet. So uh, true, true. So, <laughs> but like <laughs> we're pivoting to to climate change. Yeah, but we still got those people who are like Donald Trump and, and you know seventy five years we're old. We're always like, gonna have those people. Yeah, those people are always going to be with us, unfortunately, no matter what this topic is. Yeah, they'll yeah. be in our hearts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's happening, a clean energy revolution. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, if you have any comments about the movie or what we should watch next, please put those in the comments below. And don't forget to stay tuned, hit the bell button, subscribe, now you know. <laughs>